Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to be taking a look at external instruments. So this is a way in Cubase Pro only of integrating external MIDI instruments into your workflow. Now obviously back in the day all instruments would have been external but then we didn't have audio recording DAWs back in that particular time. And of course with the advent of software-based instruments, VST instruments in the case of Cubase, a lot of people don't have external MIDI instruments, but there's still a lot they have to offer. And being able to integrate them seamlessly into your workflow is a lot nicer than just setting them up uh, with just a MIDI output and then an audio channel, etc. So this works a lot better. So if you've got an external MIDI device that you want to start using, this is a video for you. So let's get started. So first things first, the setup. Now the setup is what's seen on screen. So I actually don't have many hardware instruments. So I've used my old and many times gigged Roland GR09 guitar synthesizer, which actually has some reasonably good sounds on it. Probably the reason I've kept it. And as you can see, it's expanded to six megabytes. Yeah, I went crazy and bought the expansion pack. Anyway, uh, it's just wired in fairly simply. So all we have is a MIDI out coming out of the audio interface, which goes to the MIDI in of the device in question. And then the two outputs, because I'm running it in stereo, go to two inputs on the audio device. And that's it. So it's it's pretty straightforward. And if you set up an external effect, this will be pretty familiar. It's just instead of having a, a audio feed, you have a MIDI feed, which is what's going to get the synth to make some sound. Now, here we are in Cubase, so we're just going to take you through the setup of this. So the first thing to do is to set up your instrument. You'll only typically need to do this once, as we will see a bit later on. But you go to the Audio Connections window and then the External Instruments tab. So again, this is Cubase Pro only, so this won't be for you. You won't see this tab if you're on a lower version of Cubase. I'm going to click Add External Instrument. And here we get uh, some options. So I'm going to call it GR09 because that's what it is. I've got no mono returns and one stereo return. Okay, now you can associate a MIDI device now, but I think it's easier just to do this part first and then add the MIDI device. So that's why I'm doing it this way. So I'm going to click OK. And now we can see we've got the skeleton of what we need, but we need to do some connections. So first thing first, we want to connect these audio returns. Now I've got them plugged into inputs three and four. So left and right. So those are now plumbed in. Now the last thing we need to do is to connect the MIDI. Now this is where it's easy to get into the weeds. So I would suggest you just follow along by rote because there's some complexity if you start playing around with uh, some of these other settings that you'll see later on. And I tend to just leave it because I'm not interested in adding too much functionality here. So I'm going to click where it says no link, go to MIDI devices and then pick create device. So here, this is just creating a new device. Now, the crucial thing is we give it a name. So I'm going to call it GR09 MIDI, and I'm going to call it MIDI just to differentiate in that window between the instrument itself and the MIDI device. All of the rest of this, I would leave as it is. You don't need to mess with any of this if you're just going to use the basic functionality. Once you've moved away from the name tab, you'll be able to hit OK. And if I hit OK, it gets created and it gets connected. You would think, but no, there's another step. You have to do one more. So once you've done that, click on there, go to MIDI devices and then open MIDI device manager. The reason is you need to connect this to your physical MIDI output. So you can see we've got GR09 MIDI selected here and because it's selected there, now we can pick the output. So I'm going to click there and that's the output I have available, but we need to make that connection. Otherwise it won't work. So this is one of those things where it's, it's slightly unfriendly. Clicking that, that's it, close that. With that set, so now we've got our audio uh, port set and we've got our MIDI device set up properly, we can close this. And now we can create an actual track. So this is done in the standard way. So we just do add instrument track. And if we go to external plugins, or just type the name of the plugin itself, you can see we've got this X here and we've got our GR09, which we've just created. We click add track and the window which we will come back to later on appears but most importantly we should be in a position now to send MIDI to our external synthesizer. 
Just to demonstrate that, I'm just going to double click between the locators to create a part. Open up here and so you can see what's going on. And if I press C3, you can hear that. That's working. So that's on the first default program, A11 in this case. But everything is ready to go. So if we just draw in some MIDI, So there's just a random bit of MIDI, and if we play that back, there we go, works perfectly. And we're pretty much set up. So that's the basics covered. With those few steps, you can get your MIDI device integrated into Cubase and start playing with it exactly as you would with a VST instrument. However, there's a few more things to do, so let's have a look now. So first things first, uh, program changes. Now you can make this a lot more complicated, although I haven't had much luck with it lately. So I'm just gonna keep it nice and simple. And in fact, what I'm gonna do is just use this here. So we've got bank selector and we've got program selector. Now most MIDI synths will respond to program changes and that's what this will send. So you see, as I press this here, if you look at the GRO9, so one equates to A11, two to A12, 3 to A13, and so on. So the GRO9 has a slightly odd uh, way of representing those purely because it's got four foot pedals and it's designed for on stage use by guitarists using those pedals. But these just equate to exactly what you would expect. And if we put in a number, let's put in 67, we can see we end up on C13, etc. That kind of thing, fairly piecemeal you'll probably find that your MIDI synth will respond in a similar way. However, you may need to send bank messages as well. I'll leave you to discover that in your MIDI device manual. Now, mix down, as you may be aware, needs to be done in real time. So if we go to the audio mix down dialog box, we can see that the option for real time export. So unless you tick that, it won't work. If you don't tick that, it will remind you and then tick it. But we'll just tick that. Always remember to deactivate external MIDI inputs because then that means while you're clicking on your keyboard, etc., while it's mixing down, you're not going to mess anything up. And then we can export audio. And you see it takes real time. You see it happen in real time. And then our audio file has been generated. So fairly straightforward stuff so far. Now, one of the problems that can arise with this is you may not have access to the synth at the time you do your mix down. So Possibly you've borrowed it, maybe you've gone mobile, etc. that kind of thing. Or maybe you want to use it more than once or use more than one synth and you haven't got enough audio inputs. Fortunately, there's a pretty easy way to get around that. Let's have a look. So render in place is extremely useful in a number of situations. And this one is no exception because fortunately it works for external instruments. So all you need to do is to highlight the part or parts that you want to render shift and right click or two finger tap then go to render in place render with current settings you see an audio track gets created and then you have a mix down and handily it mutes the midi part in question so now you have this audio representation of the part so it would be possible to alter the render settings to create a bit of a tail on this to stop the end being cut off so abruptly. But render in place is really useful in this kind of situation, particularly because it's either you want to use the same instrument multiple times with different sounds, or possibly you want to use different instruments in the same mix and you only have a limited number of ins and outs. Now, when we originally created the instrument, you'll notice there was a window appeared with two controls, delay and return gain. We're going to take a look at those now. So delay allows Cubase to automatically introduce a pre-delay effectively. So if, if you have a MIDI device which has a, a bit of a, a delay to it, so when you send it a note, it takes it a while to deliver that sound for whatever reason, you can dial this in here. So a, a good way to see this in action is to create this part here and let's just move this part so that it has some space around it. And then we're gonna render this. So first we'll render it with zero delay.
and then let's render it with 100 milliseconds of delay. And as you can see there, the 100 milliseconds actually means that it's been played earlier because it's expecting the synth in question to play 100 milliseconds late. So if you have any older equipment, this will allow you to compensate for that and get perfect timing. It will take a bit of experimentation, but it shouldn't be too difficult to do because you can just do a few trial uh, renders and then you should be in business. Now, return gain is pretty self-explanatory. If you don't have enough range of uh, volume settings, whether on the synth or your audio interface, you can always dial in some gain in here and have that preset. So every time you load it up, it will be the same. So there's a look at delay and return gain. So now let's take a look at saving all of these settings as an instrument to allow you to recall it later on. So it's pretty common to need to repurpose inputs, particularly if you don't have, you know, 32 inputs knocking around. So what's useful is to save these. And as you can see, we've got all of these settings here. We'll even leave the delay in just to show that it's retained. And let's add that to favorites. So now under favorites, we have the GR09 MIDI. So let's remove this. Now, first, we need to take it out of the project. So I'm just going to change this to no instrument and then return to the window, right click and remove external instruments. And now we have nothing, but we can just load it up quickly now by going to favorites and JR09 MIDI and see that all of the settings are retained, including our delay and return gain had we set it. So there you go, external instruments. It means you can dig out all your old MIDI gear from the loft or wherever and get the band back together. Uh, in all seriousness, it, they're a pretty useful way to integrate this kind of equipment into your workflow and probably as seamless as it can be in lieu of a time machine allowing faster than real time mix downs to take place. But with render in place, it probably means you won't be using it at the final mix down anyway. Makes life much simpler and means that you're not endlessly twiddling knobs and going, oh, if I could just get that sound back, this track wouldn't suck anymore. Anyway. As ever, I hope you found this useful, and if you have, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you again soon for more Music Tech Tuition.